Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So the last day of spoiler season is here, and so we slip out the back a new and exciting card. And yeah, let's see what that one does. Make sure you check out that episode. But first, make sure you stay tuned to this episode because we've got a brand new commander that, oh my goodness, this is just going to be crazy. I, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I'm prepared to, uh, to play against this one just yet. So, of course, um, this is definitely Eddie's fault. Uh, Eddie definitely was the one who designed this commander, uh, and gave them the idea for it. It is no one's fault but Eddie. That is completely not true. But, uh, still blame Eddie in the comments below, even though Eddie just helps out and, uh, and yeah, great help with the channel. And now with that said, let's jump into it. So, Rigo Streetwise Mentor is a 2-2 cat citizen that costs, get ready for it, Celestia White Azorius, because that's a mana cost in your command zone now, and it enters the battlefield with a shield counter on it. Now again, shield counters are a brand new thing in Streets of New Capenna. Well, okay, Palliation Accord originally had them, but they didn't work this way, but now I do think they actually work this way with Palliation Accord too. Let me know in the comments below if you know on that one. Anyways, it means that if it would be dealt damage or destroyed, you remove that shield counter instead. So it's kind of like a little force bubble. Regardless, that is not the important part of this commander and the part that, well, again, I'm not looking forward to playing against this commander because it says whenever you attack a player or planeswalker with one or more creatures with power one or less, draw a card. Now that text might sound very familiar or at least something like it essentially. And yeah, uh, this commander is reminiscent to another commander that can get quite annoying to play against. Now there are some differences and we'll talk about that commander here in a bit, so no spoilers because this is already a spoiler. Anyways, yeah, there's some really powerful things that you can do with this low to the ground commander with a bunch of low to the ground creatures. And this can get pretty out of hand very, very quickly. Now, of course, there is a limitation on this commander that does say one or more creatures. So you're not just drawing a card for every single creature that you have that has power one or less that's attacking. That being said, yeah, in a multiplayer game like Commander where you've got three opponents, yep, you're going to be drawing three cards as long as you're swinging at each of those players. And of course, in these colors, there are plenty of low to the ground creatures that are evasive and that you can just keep swinging with. And you're going to be drawing a ton of cards in absolutely no time. And yeah, because of that, there's some incredibly powerful and even broken things that you can do with this seemingly very helpful Cat Citizen. Don't be fooled, Bant can be evil too like my Feldegriff deck. Anyways, now the cards I'm going to be mentioning on this episode, I have included in a link in the description because, well, it seems to be helpful for some of you out there that want to pick up some of those cards sooner rather than later because when a new commander is spoiled and players get excited about it, well, the demand for certain cards sometimes does go up. So now with all that said, let's jump in some cards to consider for Rego Streetwise Mentor. And the first are quite obvious. Um, Slitherblade, Miss Cloaked Herald, and Triton Shorestalker are pretty much any creature that says cannot be blocked on it uh, that is very low to the ground is definitely a consideration for this commander. Each of these are literally just one mana creatures again, just a single blue mana, and it doesn't really matter that they just have, you know, one power. Actually, you know what? That's exactly what you want. You just want creatures with low power. Again, you want creatures that have one or less power, so these are perfect. And again, their toughness really doesn't matter because they are unblockable. So, I mean, you literally could just get three of these, you know, evasive or unblockable creatures down, you know, one on turn one, two on turn two, and then your commander on turn three, and then all of a sudden you're swinging on turn three with three creatures, drawing three cards. Yes, again, as I said, this can get out of hand very, very quickly. And again, like I mentioned, there's another somewhat similar commander, and uh, somewhat spoiler alert, 
Uh, that one doesn't have access to white, but now that you do have access to white, you've got even more evasive creatures to pick from, like Soltari Foot Soldier, Healer Talk, and Judges Familiar. Soltari Foot Soldier is a very simple creature, a 1-1 for a white that has shadow. Now, shadow is a very old mechanic, which basically means this creature can only block or be blocked by other creatures with shadow. And, um, yeah, no one really runs creatures with shadow, so, uh... Yeah, this is basically just unblockable. Now it can't block, but who cares? Attack, draw cards. And then Healer's Hawk is a 1-1 with flying and lifelink. And yeah, you're just going to find that now that you've got access to white with this commander, there are a ton of evasive creatures, a lot of flyers out there to just have other things stapled onto them. Like again, this, hey, just incidental life gain. Sure. Or Judge's Familiar, a 1-1 bird with flying that you can sacrifice if you really need to to counter an instant or sorcery spell that's the control pays one. So even just having this on the field can be a giant deterrent from your opponents actually casting certain things. And yeah, it's kind of like a taxing effect just by being there because your opponents are like, okay, well, I could cast my instant that I really want to cast, but um, that judge is familiar is there and I don't have an extra mana if I do so, so I won't cast it. And of course, in a somewhat similar way, you've got Mausoleum Wanderer, a 1-1 flying spirit that has, whenever another spirit enters the battlefield under control, Mausoleum Wanderer gets plus plus one until end of turn. And you can also sacrifice it and counter target in sort of sorcery spell, let's control pays X, where X is Mausoleum Wanderer's power. So yeah, if you've got other spirits coming into play, this can counter things for even more. And of course, there are a ton of great evasive low to the ground blue creatures as well. And you know, of course, a lot of flyers too, which can usually get you through on most opponents like Siren Storm Tamer and Fairy Seer are other ones. Siren Storm Tamer is a 1-1 with flying that has pay a blue, sacrifice it, counter target spell or ability that targets you or a creature you control. So this one can just straight up counter a spell that targets us or a creature we control, so this is yet another fantastic way to protect our commander, which is already protected because of a shield counter. And of course I will mention with that shield counter, if you maybe include some proliferate effects in this deck, like, oh, I don't know, some creatures that can proliferate when they deal combat damage, maybe, and that they're evasive too, and low to the ground, you can keep getting more shield counters. Yeah, this can get ridiculous very quickly. So, of course, I mean, there's a ton of flyers. Yeah, fairies here. A 1-1 one, one flyer that when it enters the battlefield, scry two. So just some additional card selection for you to staple onto a low-to-the-ground flyer that is then going to generate you card advantage when it attacks. And speaking of attacking, you know what's really funny with this commander that is different than that other one that I will talk about here in a bit? And it's, I'm sorry, it's probably getting annoying that I just keep mentioning it without telling its name. Anyways, uh, yeah, you can attack your opponents with zero power creatures and you still draw. Because the commander does not say deals combat damage, it's literally just on attack if you happen to attack a player with a creature that has power one or less. It doesn't matter if it's not dealing any damage, you still get to draw. So yeah, Birds of Paradise, Gilded Goose, and Xanted Storm are very good in this deck. Birds of Paradise is a 0-1 flyer that can tap dead one man of any color to your mana pool, so basically one of the best mana dorks out there ever. Gilded Ghost is a 0-2 flyer, and when it enters the battlefield, you get a food token, and you can tap and sacrifice that food for one man of any color, and you can also pay one in a green and tap it to make a food token. So, kind of like a one-off Birds of Paradise with more toughness, and you can actually, you know, again, not have it be a one-off if you make more food, but yeah. And then Xanted Storm is a 0-1 flying insect that has, when it attacks, defending player can't cast spells this turn. So yeah, attack and then cast all your spells in the second main phase that you want to cast because, well, you can shut the player off that might have counter spells from those spells. And how about another zero power creature with signal pest? And please correct me below in the comments if this does not work, but I'm pretty positive that it does. And blame Eddie if I'm wrong. It's a zero one pest for just one, and it has battle cry, and it can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. So battle cry means that whenever this creature attacks, each other attacking creature gets plus one with zero until end of turn. Now I believe you can stack your attack triggers so that, hey, okay, my commander is going to recognize that I'm attacking with creatures that have one or less power. Then I will stack the battle cry after that. So essentially... I draw my cards first, then my creatures get pumped, so even if I'm then, you know, after, you know, I draw the cards, attacking with creatures that have two power, that's fine. I'm just dishing out extra damage while still getting the benefit of drawing the cards. But again, if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments below. Regardless, I know I am not wrong on Biomass Mutation, which is an instant for X Simic Simic, and it says creatures you control have base power and toughness XX until end of turn. This is a great way to just, you know, swing out with a ton of tiny evasive creatures, draw some cards, then your opponents are like, oh, okay, yeah, cool, I mean... You're not going to get any additional benefit by hitting me, so sure, I'll take just a couple of points of damage. And then you're like, nope, fooled ya, these creatures are now massive. And of course, something else to consider for this deck is a card like True Conviction, which can give your creatures Double Strike. Well, and also Lifelink, which is nice, but Double Strike. Double Strike obviously can help your creatures hit harder without increasing their power, so you are still getting that benefit from attacking with tiny, tiny creatures. And of course, you know, if you pump those creatures after they already attack with something like Biomass Mutation, it makes it doubly as effective. And speaking of doubly as effective...
We finally made it to that secret commander that I probably should have brought up earlier. Yeah, and many of you probably already knew it. Edric's by Master of Trust. Yeah, this is definitely a call back to that commander. Edric is a 2-2 elf rogue that costs one green blue, and it says whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may draw a card. So this is the original Tiny Flyers deck, and um, yeah, um, it's definitely going to go in this deck too. Because again, the vast majority of your creatures, you know, except for, you know, your zero power creatures, are going to be able to draw you a card in addition, when they also hit the opponent now. So you can get absurd amount of card advantage out of this, and again, if you've got something like, you know, True Conviction in play to give your creatures double strike, double the card advantage out of that. Now, really quick, in comparison to Edric, um, our brand new commander, Rigo, might have a leg up on this one. Now, obviously, Edric does count every single creature that you have that is going to hit an opponent. That being said, they do need to get through versus just attacking, so there's a difference there. On top of that, Edric can benefit your opponents as well, because when they attack your opponents and hit them, well, they get to draw from that as well. And also, obviously, Rigo has access to white as well, which gives you a ton of new low to the ground evasive creatures and some other cool things that you can do with this kind of a deck. Regardless, there are definitely upsides and downsides to each of these commanders in comparison to each other, but yeah, Edric, you have a spot in this deck for sure. And speaking of which, we can also get more card advantage from cards like Coastal Piracy, Reconnaissance Mission, and Bind of Thassa. Each of these basically do the exact same thing in this deck. Coastal Piracy says, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. So, yeah, basically like Edric, but just for us. So, yeah, swing with your tiny flyers, get through, and hit and draw. More cards. Reconnaissance Mission does basically the exact same thing, but we could also cycle it for two if we really needed to. And then Bind of Thassa is basically a legendary enchantment artifact version of Coastal Piracy, but we can also pay one in blue and tap it, and creatures our opponents control attack this turn if able. So if we really want to send an opponent into a bad situation, we can with this. But yeah, the most important thing is that they draw us even more cards. So yeah, the amount of card advantage we can have with this commander is absurd. Again, just think about, again, very easy plays to do with this deck. Um, hey, turn one, evasive creature. Turn two, two more evasive creatures. Turn three, commander, draw three cards. Turn four, put one of these down, and then draw, well, at least, you know, six cards, essentially. You know, three from the evasive creatures from our commander attacking, three from them hitting, and then, you know, if we can actually swing with our commander as well and hit someone, cool. Another card. So, seven cards on turn four. For some completely realistic plays with the number of low-to-the-ground evasive creatures we're going to be running in this deck. Yeah, there's a, there's a reason why I'm not looking forward to playing against this commander anytime soon. And also a big thank you to Eddie for also pointing out Teferi's Ageless Insight as a way to make things even more absurd. It says if you would draw a card except the first one you draw on each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. And then Thought Reflection essentially just doubles up all of our card draw. So yeah, with either of these in play... Now, when we attack with, you know, three creatures, one at each opponent with power one or less, we are drawing six cards. And again, on top of that, if we've got, you know, Edric or, you know, a Coastal Piracy or any of those kind of cards in play too, we're drawing twice as many with those as well. So yeah, this gets out of hand. And speaking of getting out of hand, um, yeah, I mean, the end goal for most of these Edric style decks are, hey, just run a bunch of extra turn spells and keep drawing into them and casting them. So, Karn Temporal Sundering, Nexus of Fate, Time Warp, you did it. Karn Temporal Sundering is a legendary source that says target player takes an extra turn for this one, return up to one target non-land permit to source hand, exile Karn Temporal Sundering. So, luckily for your opponents, this one does exile, but still, I mean, if you're drawing six, seven, eight cards a turn, you can probably get to another one, or at least a card that can... Well, we'll get to it here in a bit. Or how about Nexus of Fate? Take an extra turn after this. What if Nexus of Fate we put into a grip from anywhere, reveal Nexus of Fate, and shuffle into its owner's library instead? So yeah, you very well might just cast this, uh, take an extra turn, shuffle it back in your library, then swing with all your creatures, and then uh, draw back into this. So then on your next turn, which is your extra turn, you can do it again. Or maybe you've got those extra turn spells that don't exile, like, you know, Time Warp, which says target player takes an extra turn for this one, and no exiling. So then, because of that, we can also utilize... Cards like Regrowth and Reclaim. Regrowth says return target card from your graveyard to your hand, and Reclaim says put target card from your graveyard on top of your library. Whichever one of these we're using on a card like Time Warp, it does not really matter. Regrowth's gonna get it right back to our hand so we can cast it again. Reclaim's gonna put it on top of our library, and then we just attack with creatures, draw cards, get that, and cast it again. So, yes, this can be a very repetitive process of this player just swinging with really tiny, 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 tiny creatures, and then drawing cards, casting extra turn spells, and then doing it again, and again, and again, and taking forever to take players out because those creatures are tiny.
But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Rego Streetwise Mentor. Now, obviously, you do not have to run an extra turn style strategy with this commander. That being said, I think, um, yeah, a, a lot of players out there are probably going to do that. Just as Edric has basically become Tiny Flyers Extra Turns, Rigo is probably going to become Tiny Flyers Extra Turns. But now since it has access to white, you know, even more evasive creatures, and oh my gosh, um, Teferi's Protection. A and I guess, you know, any other kind of, you know, all your creatures are indestructible until end of turns kind of spells just to save your tiny team. Yeah, this is going to get pretty obnoxious pretty quickly. But I'm sure some players out there are very excited to see this one. I am just not going to be one of those players that is excited to play against it. And of course, with this spoiler season, there are a ton of exciting cards. So make sure you check out my other quick takes and make sure you're on the lookout for my other quick takes coming up today. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.